Good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information, uh, Mr. Dwyer. James Marley. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for the opportunity to present tonight and introduce the project that Hyperion Systems has been developing in collaboration with Joe Sikowski. Um, and I have a quick um, five slide presentation that we can go through it's that I offered Conscom last week. Um, if I can share my screen. Uh, it, go ahead. Does the host needs to enable uh, yeah. screen share? Okay. Great. Uh, so here's the presentation. Um, this site is off of Shattuck Road, um, and this is Commons here and Shattuck going up this way. Now the parcel we're looking at is back here. It's an eight and a half acre parcel. Joe has used it um, for various crops on rotation uh, for the past um, several decades. He purchased it from Hibbard, I believe, uh, about 20 years ago. Um, the project um, is going to be, so the project is going to be uh, 2.1 acres of dual use solar or agrovoltaics, which um, is going to be installed. The solar will be installed in a way to not take the land out of production. Um, it'll be installed in a way, I'll show you a picture. Um, the modules will be single axis tracker and they'll be 10 feet off the ground. Uh, the design is specifically implemented to um, allow for Joe's equipment um, and for to pass underneath and for uh, hand harvesting to occur as well. Um, so the site has been used for crop rotations in the past. Joe would like to move his chicken production here, um, which he currently has behind Carl's uh, excavating. And that would take place in the uh, early summer through, through the midsummer into August. And then at that point, he would hope for a fall crop rotation. Um, Eaton Associates did the site survey, um, which is shown here. Um, the site was flagged by- I sent it to you. Yeah. Uh, Ward Smith, Wendell Services, uh, because there's a drainage ditch on the western edge, which extends down here, and then there are hydric soils on the eastern edge. Um, Hyperion had uh, the Conservation Commission do a site visit on 5-4 um, uh, earlier this month, and we uh, participated in the Conservation Commission meeting last month. The concert, or last week, excuse me. The CONSCOM requested um, Hyperion come up with some more finalized plans. The uh, meeting from last week has been continued for next week. Um, Hyperion is working with Solar Design Associates to complete the plans to their uh, requested. Excuse me. The next picture. So here's what the array will ultimately look like. It'll be nine rows and then a row over here. And so these pan modules will be fashioned east to west tracking. So north is facing this way. You can see the arrow here. The modules will track the sun um, throughout the day, east, west, and will only tick or, or rotate one degree every 15 minutes. And it's all on a single motor. Um, and so the motor is about 52 decibels less than a typical uh, ref uh, house refrigerator. And the motor runtime throughout the day is, uh, throughout the, the summer day would be 17 minutes in total. And I should mention that um, the project will be entirely within um, the 35 foot buffer zone. So there's not going to be any waiver request um, asked to the conservation. Here's an image. Um, this is a site in South Deerfield just to offer kind of what an elevated or dual use um, array will look like with animals underneath. Uh, of course, there'll be chickens, so it, it'll be a little bit different here, but um, th these are cattle, um, Angus cattle that um, coexisted in this area for the first three years of this site in, in South Deerfield um, very well. They love the uh, shade in the summer provided by the modules. And this site in, um, has been part of a research effort for the past six years with um, UMass Amherst and the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. And then here's an image of the single axis tracker, uh, 10 feet off the ground. This racking is going to be provided by Array Technologies, a company based in um, the western part of the country. Um, so this, this is a, 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 um, a project down in Georgia that they did. This is a much larger scale project, but to give you all an idea of what um, the height is going to be of the site. 
So that's a really high level, but I want to back up um, because my request or uh, email to build wire was about the um, screening for the southern edge for this um, southern border. We don't have anything in our plans as of yet. Um, we haven't, Joe has communicated with these um, neighbors and we haven't um, had any pushback, but we really um, are trying to be as transparent and responsible in this process. Um, so I guess just opening up to the planning board, um, what kind of recommendations for vegetative screening would be requested. Um, we've discussed or, or mentioned to Conservation Commission Arborvitis, um, which wasn't uh, really encouraged. I don't think um, new Arborvitae would be, um, of course, near the 10 feet high uh, height of the modules. So um, I'd like to open it up now, I guess, at this point to any feedback or comments. Okay. What, one question. How will, these, how will the steel posts be mounted in the ground? Yes. So they will be post driven um, using um, a, a special uh, machine that will come in. I can send you an image of that. It's not um, anything heavier than what Joe currently has in those fields. No, no, I mean, what I mean is there's no there's no sono, no concrete soil to just just the post steel post driven in the ground, however you get it in. Great question. No, there's absolutely no concrete. Okay. This uh, design is meant to be as minimally invasive as possible. OK. As far as screening, um, this will require a special permit. You realize that? Yes. Um, I would wait until the public hearing to see, um, you know, you're, you're open to screening, but I'm not sure from a planning board point of view that I would say, well, you got to do this, you got to do that. Kind of wait and see what the neighbors say at the public hearing, if anything. Um, and then we can make a decision around that. So we don't, we don't get too carried away, say we want this, we want this right now and the neighbors have different ideas or no idea, maybe they don't care. I don't know. So that's, there wasn't anybody on the meeting last week at the um, Public Conservation Commission meeting, but then again, our uh, project didn't get heard until about 10, 20 at night. So I think most everybody had signed off at that point. Yeah, yours will be, when, when it is conducted, it'll be at about seven o'clock in the evening. Okay. And so, you know, we'll, we'll act accordingly with that. Okay. Okay. I know what, I know what the other opinions the board, other members of the board may have. Well, I'll just add that the, <clears throat> the requirement for screening, this is a large scale ground mounted solar because it's more than an acre. Yes. Um, it, systems and appurtenant structures shall be adequately screened from view from public ways and neighboring properties with vegetation or behind other existing structures. Um, this is so far set back that I, I think it's going to be like the um, installation off of uh, Huntington, which you can see from the road, but it's not uh, not shocking. Yeah, understood. And I should mention that part of the reason we selected the site with Joe, he had a several other sites. Um, the western edge, it, it, there's a lot of natural screening already there. There's um, a windbreak of trees on the western edge and then the eastern and northern edge, as you could sort of see in the images that I shared, are also offer uh, natural vegetation screening. Uh, in terms of megawatts, how big will the system be? It'll be uh, under, it's um, 488 kWDC, so under the 500 <laughs> kW limit. That triggers quite a bit of um, uh, <laughs> And how much does it cost per kilowatt hour to generate? What is the what is the generation cost per kilowatt hour? Um, the per watt cost of the project, or no, the, no, to generate a kilowatt of electricity, what does it cost when you put one of these things in? I'm just curious. I that's a good question. Well, the the compensation <laughs> the base compensation rate from the state is going to be around eleven cents, and then there's going to be adders on top of that. So we're going for the agricultural adder, so that's six cents, and then the single axis tracker. Um, so, but, so this is it costs about twenty cents, twenty five cents to generate a kilowatt electricity from a solar field. No, no, it it. So I, I I think I understand your question, and we can't really answer that at this point because we're still uh, developing the, the project, and there's costs. yeah. Well, I I would think that your project is similar to other projects, and it just kind of fascinates me that we've been putting these things in the United States for decades now, and nobody can tell us what it, it costs to generate a kilowatt of electricity. And that's an editorial comment. Okay. Okay. Um, James the. Just to clarify, the the one of the last pictures you showed was a shot down in Georgia. Mm -hmm. 
I believe you said that was just for the height, right? Because that looked like that was rigid rows, whereas you're doing individual, each one's on a, on a pole, right? Well, they're all, no, it's going to be similar to that. Um, they're going to be long rows of approximately 480 feet long. And then there's uh, a row on the Eastern edge that's going to be half of that length. So how does that turn? The, the whole row doesn't turn. Each no, the whole module within the row turns, that's. The modules are on a, uh, they're all connected um, and they're on a string and they, they rotate east west on. So there, there's 10 rows and each individual row will be rotating. Mm -hmm. And there's a central motor that powers that tracking. I mean, this is good enough to do its zone. Just out of curiosity, does one motor turn the whole row? Yes, it can turn the whole array. So all four, so one row has a 488 panels in it? Uh, 400, yes, 480 feet long. The, the overall module quantity is um, 1,200, 1,222, okay. I believe. So, so one motor turns that entire row of 480 feet? Yes, yes. Wow. Where do you get the panel? Where are the pa panels coming from? Uh, right now, we have it spec for Canadian solar modules, but um, depending on timelines, that, that could change. What do you mean timelines? So there's interconnection timeline that hasn't been finalized with the local utility. So Eversource um, and then the building permit timeline as well. So are you at, so is your company, J Jake, are you actually the solar installer of this? Or are you just the engineering, you doing engineering on it? We're developing the project. Okay. Jake, uh, I apologize for coming in a little late, but the original plan that you showed. Can you put it back up again? I just wanted to get the location of two streets that are the one before that. That's it. This That's is Shattuck. Which one's Shattuck? This street. Top, right. top, upper left. Yeah, so it's, it's Cummins Shattuck. Road is, in, in the other road is, is bottom. It's Cummins Road on the bottom? Yes. Yeah. That's Cummins on the bottom, yeah. So this is the natural vegetation on the west that I was talking about, and then on the east and north as well. So the trench plan will be to come, there's an existing farm access road right here. And the trench plan- Right where? Right through here. They okay, go, I got you. Yes. Right through here, and the road sort of peters off right uh, in this area. Joe does not, actively farm this section of the property. It's not ideal for turning equipment and it's also pretty wet. Um, the inverter pad will be in this Northwest corner. We'll mark that in the final plans that Solar Design Associates puts together. And the trench, the trench line as well will be clearly identified. I should also mention that this project um, has, is being funded um, by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory and is also part of a larger research effort um, by UMass Amherst as well, which has been um, by a U.S. CETO grant, a Department of Energy, uh, Solar Energy Technology Office grant. So when do you actually want to apply for this, for all the special permits and everything then, Mr. Marley? We'd like to begin that process um, as soon as possible. Of course, we need the final plan. So we're hoping for that before next week's Conservation Commission meeting. Um, begin that process perhaps uh, next week. Okay, we meet, you know, the, we meet the first and third Tuesday of the month. So the next meeting we have will be the first Tuesday of June, which I think is June 1st, so I'm not positive, okay. or June 2nd. And so you can apply with all the paperwork at that time. In the meantime, um, do you have the application form, Mr. Dwyer? Uh, yes, I can, I can email that. Okay, good, just email that to Mr. Marley. He can fill it out, return with the with, with, with all with all the package. And I'll when at the next meeting, we'll tell you how to get you can apply at the next meeting. We'll set a date and you can get you'll need to get me um, sets of plans and the application. You could do well, I'll tell you how to get that to me at the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Next up is Mark Dean. Thank you.
I see Mark, Mark Dean. You are muted. I'm muted. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So we're we here hear with uh, a couple other gentlemen um, and uh, Ideal Movers, and I believe uh, Bucky Sparkle, who is the um, civil engineer for the project. Um, I guess it's my understanding that he's going to uh, introduce you guys to uh, the site plan um, for uh, the, the uh, self-storage project that we're working on. Yes, Mark, thank you. Hello, my name is Bucky Sparkle. I'm a civil engineer and uh, it's good to be back in Hadley again. Uh, I am definitely one of a, a team on this project, but I'm gonna go over the civil site plan stuff, um, bring up uh, a couple little bits and um, address questions that the board might have and as well as ask a few myself to make sure we get a, a sense of what the board might be interested in. So if it's all right, I'm gonna share my screen here. And we'll begin with um, the site layout. So this is you know, the bread and butter of a civil engineer. Uh, we are looking at a 4.2 acre site that is at the corner of uh, South Maple Street and the rail trail that runs right through here. So the, the mall is up this way and um, I think the Walmart Plaza is out in this direction. So quite a bit of development to the north <clears throat> uh, demarcated by a shift to agricultural use to the south. It is zoned uh, industrial and uh, we have on site, uh, we have a site feature of a, a wetland that uh, between that and the 35 foot no disturb buffer occupies the northern third of the site. Uh, the development itself will be in the lower two thirds of the property. Um, the center piece of the proposal is a three story um, uh, climate controlled storage facility. Um, this is a, a 32,000 square foot footprint. So we're about uh, 97,000 square feet or so for the total gross floor area of this building. Uh, at the rear is a proposed one-story cold storage garage style building. So this is the, the typical self-storage unit similar to the ideal movers uh, and storage unit that's out on Mill Valley. So a series of you know, garage doors basically that each unit would have access on the east and west sides. The facility we are aiming for uh, one-way traffic flow through here to help control a few things. Uh, one is security because it is a gated perimeter. We are proposing a, an eight-foot eight foot security fence around the facility, uh, at least all the, the main entrances. The offices are out front. We are proposing uh, 25 parking spaces, which if you run through the algorithm and the bylaw, that, that should be the right number for this facility. Uh, the majority of those are out by the office if people are stopping to park or staff uh, they're going to be up at the office end uh, the, the back end is where all the big trucks go swinging around and people you know park as needed at their facility uh, there's also this light area of port cocher which i had to look up in french i have to admit uh, and it means uh, carriage entry so this is a covered roof where people can load and unload multiple vehicles and have a, a main entrance into the building uh, we are looking for a single one way in and a single one way out. So we have two drive cuts for this uh, to facilitate again, the traffic flow and large vehicles moving through the facility, attendant stormwater management areas, a couple of basins, uh, the deepest of which will be about two feet deep. So pretty shallow basins uh, as well as infiltration areas, a septic system out here. And I haven't shown the, the water and electric yet because it's still <coughs> I also want to point out that there is a landscaping along the northern edge of the building where we're able to squeeze in uh, some extra green space plus the required 15 foot landscape buffer along the road frontage. You'll note that it stops at the buffers, um, the landscape buffer stops at the 35 foot wetland buffer because obviously this is a no disturb area. So uh, I don't think the CONCOM would be appreciative of us landscaping uh, in that buffer zone. Um, we have, uh, I want to bring up the 
elevation. So <clears throat> I don't have a, an image yet of the story, a one story garage building. I think most people are familiar with what unit storage units look like the garage style. This building though, very large, does not look like a typical box. So Mark Dean and his crew have provided this, obviously this one's a black and white rendering, but the three story building, and I would invite Mark to, to comment uh, as well, but we have a stone facade, uh, and uh, several architectural elements, a fair amount of fenestration, so lots of glass to look at, uh, stripes, colors, other elements to break up the mass of the building, uh, understanding that it is a large building and just a boring old box uh, is, is not considered very attractive. Um, and uh, Mark, before I skip back <clears throat> to the site plan, if there's anything you'd like to add, because I'm definitely not the architect, um, feel free. Yeah, if we could go back to the front, I mean, what you'll see, there's a there's a combination of materials. Um, we're looking at the use of uh, brick with a very nice detailed uh, 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 brick molding, um, cultured stone. Uh, and the main facade is a uh, metal panel, which is called a Kingspan panel, um, which actually helps to bring the cost down uh, a little bit and uh, allows the... Um, owner to uh, sort of put together this nice of a building. Uh, there's a front entrance that goes into an office area that's going to be used for um, uh, retail space and also uh, the rental area. There's a couple of uh, business offices behind that. And then, of course, behind uh, uh, the office area is the beginning of the storage units. On uh, the right-hand side of the building, um, there's an additional uh, loading area, uh, as Bucky mentioned, under the uh, port cochere, um, which allows people uh, in inclement weather to uh, drop off and, and, and pick up uh, under uh, cover. So we believe it's a very, uh, very nice looking building, obviously a big step up from your standard uh, storage buildings. Great. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'm going to go back to the site plan um, because uh, unless anybody else has anything to add from the team, this is where I'd really love to hear um, what the planning board you know, thinks about this. If there are red flags you're noticing or uh, you feel that something's out of compliance, please, please let us know now and we'll, we'll get to work on that. Okay. Um, those are retention ponds you're saying for the, for the drainage? Yeah. D detention ponds. Yes. Retention or detention? Detention. They will have a, a slow outlet, so they will will be dry normally. Where will they Where will they go to? The low Did spot of the site is this quadrant. So there'll be a level spreader here. So there'll be a sheet flow dispersion moving toward the wetland resource area, which is where all the water on the site goes now. Okay, because. When Maple Farms just to the north of you was installed, that was originally going to be a, um, a, a I thought it was the name of the company, the move, it was a moving company. They, they were similar to Ideal Movers and they put in, their ponds didn't work. And to the point that they had to, they turned into ponds. They were year round water pockets and they eventually had to run a drainage along South Maple Street all the way out to Fort River. And so just be aware that this is, I mean, I, I know they were out there digging some uh, test pits, but water is a very difficult area here um, as far as soaking into the ground because it doesn't. If it, it doesn't it, evaporate. I fully uh, agree with that. It's, it was a challenging site. Um, I was personally overseeing all of the stormwater holes and uh, the areas where the basins are, it's it's very thick soils, basically clay, very shallow groundwater, and we're taking that into account. In fact, that the water elevation here and here are really driving the entire site and lifting up the entire property. We do have the good fortune, and it doesn't show on, on this plan because I don't have the topography on, but there's a, a mound here, and there are several feet of dry sand, thank goodness. So the stormwater infiltration area is actually what is now the high point of the site. So we are going to be filling and massaging this property to make use of that. So both the septic field and the infiltration area have dry sand available. I did um, some 
a fancy perk test through there and they it's almost beach sand the water goes through very quickly uh, so we we shouldn't have any problems uh, with the groundwater infiltration uh, and the bottom of the basins are basically at existing grade now so and then we have plenty of fall elevation between the main site and the outlet down here uh, we shouldn't have any problems sending water uh, into a positive drainage system so that ever so slight knoll towards the rear of the property is actually a big sand area? Surprisingly, yeah. I was uh, kind of panicking when we were doing most of the soil tests until we got I never back. would have dreamed that. I know exactly what you're talking because I go by that land all the time. Yeah, it sticks out. So that, that mound is sand. Hmm. Wow. It's not a small right. deposit. It, it really does. It's, you know, better part of an acre uh, through there. Okay. Where is, where are... Um, where are you taking the water from that's going into the infiltrator? Is that, do you have uh, catch basins or how's that? Right, so obviously this is not the fully developed plan. I'm still working on some of those details, but we are able to capture all of the roof runoff from both buildings and get that into here. Additionally, there's going to be a catch basin around here and around here, and I'll be able to grab surface water from this portion of the site and also uh, filter it before sending it to the infiltration area. So we're, we're gonna be able to grab a very large percentage of the impervious area and send it directly to back into the groundwater. Of course, it will have a discharge if, if this gets overrun, it's a big storm event, a 10 year storm or something, it will discharge down to this basin, uh, which eventually heads off into the wetland. Have you thought about where the vent pipe will go? Is that where your gooseneck, or is there an alternate means to? You say vent pipe. I'm not quite sure uh, what you're... When I've done infiltration chambers before, we had to have a, a vent pipe that came up. Um, you know, water goes in, air gets pushed out. No? Um, this type of system usually doesn't require it uh, because it has open connections to uh, not just all of the downspouts and the catch basins. So it's, it's vented in many locations. So... Oh. Air, air will be able to come in and out. If this were sealed or a pumped system or there were some unusual pressure head uh, sending water, uh, yeah, it might be possible that you get you know, gurgling, burping because the air and the water both want to be in the same place at the same time. Okay. Won't happen here. And the last of your parking spaces in the front or at least the one that's the furthest east, it looks like you have a fence and gate going right through it, but I'm assuming that you just drew that there so it's not on top of this uh, you're you, you totally caught me there i'm so sorry i had that layer turned off we we're deciding roughly where to put the the gate so i should hire you as a consultant <laughs> you don't know <laughs> full uh full confession i'm i'm a licensed architect so oh not my first Grading plan or a site plan rodeo. Yeah. Of course not. Oh, you, are you finished with your questions, Mark? Because I have a few. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Okay. Uh, number one, Jim had one of my concerns the detention pond or retention pond. So that's uh, been the, the other one is a septic system. That's an unusual area for a septic system for 35 to potentially 50 people. And why are you not going to hook up to the sewer? To tell you the truth, I didn't realize there was a sewer here. Um, you, you just dropped well, me off. It, you, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean you can't hook up to the sewer. The sewer is down the street a little bit, so you may have to do something like that. I'm totally delighted. Let me, I'll talk to the DPW, see if I can get the details on that. Yeah, get the details on that. And the other one, while you're talking to the DPW, is the fact that this is a large building going to require sprinklers. And the, the large water main stops right at the rail trail. And then going south, there's a probably a hundred year old pipe that failed a couple of times. And uh, they had a fire in a farmer's garage there that they couldn't get adequate water supply. So you may have to loop that, that water line, eight inch, 10 inch, uh, whatever is gonna be required 
for supplementing your your suppressant system. So that would be something else you'd have to check there too. Thanks. And, so septic system, water supply, the sign. The sign is above the roof line. We don't allow the sign above the roof line. Uh, uh, here you mean these signs. Yeah, a lot of, you're not unusual in adding uh, kind of a, a facade above the roof line so you can have your, your sign higher <laughs> than the roof line. But what you're saying is that the, the roof line of significance would be this low. It's that's correct. The true roof line. Yes. So the these letters would have to be no higher than the, the roof. The roof line, line. correct. Okay. Yeah, just to be clear, thank you. So the septic system, uh, and it's a tough area to perk. Uh, sign above the roof line. Water line is uh you're going to have to, I'm sure you're going to have to extend the water line. And the question is, you're going to have to extend it to the next uh, hookup because that section of the water line on the south side of the, of the rail trail is inadequate, deficient. Okay. Right. Well, yeah, I'll definitely want to be in conversation with the DPW as they get further into the water utility for the system and coordinate with the fire suppression. That'll be handled on the architect's end. We'll work together on that. And Jim, are you going to explain to him the peer review or? Oh yeah, well, well once he gets to that point, you'll need, are okay. you aware of the peer, our peer, our peer review process? Yes, I, I received a list of, uh, I think maybe four professional engineers in the area that, that do these kind of things and it's our responsibility to yeah. acquire the review. Right. Okay, that's fine, good. Yeah, so that's not a surprise. Right? Uh, your your height dimensions stop. Um, they don't go up to the top of the fascia. I'm assuming that's under 50 feet. I'll let Martin yeah. answer that. Yeah, the height is definitely under 50 feet. Got quiet, so I'm just making sure I'm still connected. Oh, you're good. Okay, great. <laughs> Did you have any other questions? I do not. So this was uh, really good feedback from the board. Um, I see if any other team members might have any questions or comments before I bow out. Anybody else have anything else? Where's the sparkle? Or Mr. Dean? Uh, no, we're we're good for now. Thank you. All right. Um, okay. I have, the only other thing I'm sure you're aware of is lighting and um, you know having um, shields on any lighting. I don't think you've gotten that far. To... No, not not yet. Um, the the lighting is definitely a, a significant concern for each and every site plan. Um, that will be worked out by Dean Architects. Um, I'm totally happy to support the process, but they seem pretty capable. I'm happy to be working with them. So we'll be preparing a, a photometric plan for your review once uh, once we're ready to to do a final submission. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Mr. Dwyer, next. Next up would be Mr. Reedy, Attorney Reedy. Great. Um, thanks so much, Mr. Dwyer, members of the board. Um, so I was with the last group too, but Bucky did a spectacular job. So nothing for me to say. Um, so I am here this evening to, I guess, submit uh, an application for uh, an adult use marijuana establishment for 251 Russell Street. Um, this is for this board, my first remote submission. And so, you know, I, had, I had sent it over to the planning board's email. I want to say, you know, an hour and a half, maybe at this point, you know, around four o'clock today. Um, 
And so just to refresh, this is the old fitness site on Russell Street uh, owned by Modesto, Kirsten Modesto, Modesto LLC. Uh, Matt McTeague was here, I want to say a few months ago to talk to you about the site. We needed a variance. We got a variance. Uh, we needed a host community agreement. We got a host community agreement. And so now we're ready to go through the site plan review special permit process with the board. So um, explain again, Tom, uh, site, where is it on, on Russell Street? Sure. Uh, 251 Russell Street. So right before you get to Mill Valley Road, right th at that Y, it's yeah. the, the brown building. It's uh, okay. Like the new the new building. Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. 5050 Fitness was there most recently. I don't, I don't know. The sign still may be up there, but Joe, Joe it, take it, back a little bit further. It was uh, formerly a garage. Oh, that one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah it was the one that has a car on garage. The well, they one that had a car on top of them for years. I remember. I guess. Uh, there you go. That's the site, Joe. Okay, thank you. They're going to put a big marijuana cigarette on top of it now. <laughs> <laughs> Me for madness. Yeah. <laughs> Don't inhale. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I've submitted it. We've got the hard copies. We just need to know how many plans you would like. We've got the abutters list with the uh, envelopes. And we just need to know, I mean, you know, our typical submission. And we just need to know how much we have to pay. Yeah. Um, is this the, is this the uh, marijuana distributorship with, that you were trying to put into the mall? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Todd, did you have an application form as part of what you filed? Yes. It, it's, it, if you look, there'll be a cover letter and then we just, I just really condensed everything and sent it along. The second sheet is an application. So I had sent everything around as soon as it came in. So you should have it someplace, but in, in that form was an application, Tom. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So the second, if you look at it, it was a PDF. I just, what I did was took all of, cause I've got a cover letter that identifies what we're providing. Yeah. So if you go, the next document past that cover letter is your application form. We've circled site plan approval. We've circled aquifer because I believe we're, we're in the aquifer here. And so it's not a prohibited use. So it's special permit in the aquifer. Um, and then it's got all the other details that you guys ask for. Okay. Um, I'll take a look at that. I'll sign to put a fee on it and get it back to you. Perfect. And I probably, we probably want, uh, I want to say probably three sets, three hard copy sets. Okay. Because you look, there's a few boards that aren't, aren't too keen on getting emails very well, but most of the other ones do. So we'll file for the, the set to the other boards and just get me three, three hard copies sometime between now and let's say the next week. Okay. Um, we'll set your public hearing up for June 15th. Okay. And what's the name of the project? Uh, uh, it's Hadleaf Holistic Green's dispensary. Okay. That's what, yeah. June 15th? Yep. And I have six, a set of six, files. 615, good for everybody? Okay. Perfect. All right. Once you get the plans, Tom, give me a call. I can drop them off at my house sometime. Okay. That's okay. good. And then... Um, uh, the envelopes, do you want them? Do you want us to drop them off with the town clerk's Just office? Drop, drop the envelopes off to me okay. with, with all the plans. Okay. That's simple enough. That's 251 Russell, Tom? Yep. Okay. Okay. Simple enough. All right. Good seeing everybody. Thanks hey, a lot. We'll and you're requesting one month extension on the Hadley garage. Yeah. 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 So thanks for reminding me there. Uh, yeah. We just haven't heard back from DOT. We hear they're at 75% with the plans. Mark is doing a, a great job of pushing them along. Frankly, it's just, I mean, if you've dealt with DOT before, you know, with all due respect to DOT, if they're watching, you know what you're dealing with. Okay. 
So yeah, a, a month would be great. And then um, hopefully by then I'll, I'll have something. So you're not approving it conditional on them. Okay, so we'll give you an extension to six to six fifteen for that one as well. The same date as the uh, marijuana one. I appreciate that efficient. So I'll make a motion to accept the request to continue to six fifteen. Second. Okay. There's a motion. We have a second. I'll second it. Okay. I second it. Okay. Sorry. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. That might did, yeah. All in favor of the continuance, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, Thank guys. You. Good seeing you. Take care, Tom. All right. Uh that takes out uh, Matt. Um, next up was Carleen Eddy. Doesn't seem to be here any longer. And next one was Sarah. And she's not here. Um, I changed so the, the next... name, uh, Bill. It was Sarah. I changed it to Ray and Haley Sh Shipman. Oh, okay. So then, um, then you're up. <laughs> All right. I, uh, hello, board members. I uh, approached uh, Tom Quinlan for uh, a signature for a building. Uh, I mean, a business permit for my daughter Haley, uh, and uh, it's regarding the former Valley Dennis location. Uh, it's going to be a change of use to a retail space, which is going to be a uh, an antiques consignment shop. Uh, before he, uh, you know, proceeded to sign off on that, he wanted your blessing, basically, you know, uh, and, and discuss the change of use and let you know that's basically a downgrade um, from the uh, former use. Uh, there will be significantly less uh, <coughs> parking required. Uh, Valley Dennis formerly had up to 17 employees at any given time, plus patients. Uh, and the parking lot was always packed. Uh, that would not be the case. The only employee that would be there uh, would be my daughter. And uh, a few uh, consigners would be coming and going uh, to drop off their things. And, and she would be responsible for their, for their sales within the, the booths that they're going to rent. They're basically we're going to rent out the operatory space as they exist. Uh, we're just changing uh, paint, opening up the space a little bit on the inside. We will be going to permit on that. Um, I've had uh, an architect uh, come and take a look at the space because there's been, since the last uh, major renovation, which was in 2001, there's been quite a few changes of the mass building code. Uh, being that I'm with inspection services, I, I have to make sure that we get all everything done correctly here. Uh, and uh, so I had Jeremy Toll, who is a licensed architect uh, from Shelburne, come take a look and a walkthrough, who's going to be producing a letter for Tom uh, recommending what we're going to have to do to bring the, the, the space up to uh, code. Currently, there, uh, you know, Valley Dennis was kept kept up very well and, and we're compliant. We have a couple of little minor issues uh, and basically just returns on handrails so somebody doesn't hook a code or a pocketbook going down the knee grass. Um, we're also looked at, you know, occupancy load and everything looks good. Um, so I would like your, uh, you know, you know, basically, I'm looking for uh, approval uh, without without site plan, and like to continue. Obviously, there'll be sign change changes. We have we have no proposed signs now. We will comply with all existing you know uh, bylaws and overlay. And uh, when we do have a sign uh, plan uh, put together, we'll bring it you know to you for your approval. And Mike uh, graciously asked me to approach. Uh, uh, Michael Pereira at Dunkin' Donuts to see if there's something that we could do with the uh, you know, changing the Dunkin' sign to make it look a little bit more uh, Hadley-esque instead of uh, Dunkin'-esque. And uh, so I will be approaching Michael Pereira on that. It's a separate issue, but I will. I, I do. Yeah, I understand. Uh, I appreciate that. You just look at the one in, in uh, Williamsburg. It's much more attractive. Much more, okay. You know, oh, Ray, what's the street address there? That's at 138 Russell. So this is across the street from Hopkins? Directly across the street. Yes. It's right near, uh, what's that, Goff? It, it is the building yes. to the left yeah. of Greenfield Savings Bank. Yeah, yeah. The uh, 
You're not doing any exterior changes, is that right? Is that correct? Zero. Right? No, none. Okay. Well, you're a per permitted use in a permitted zone. So regarding that, it's it's you're all set. Okay. So we'll make we'll, we'll act accordingly. The only request I make is that before it had a the Valley Dentist played game with the sign bylaw. They yeah, clear, sign. Clearly, yes, I understand that with that interior lit crap. We are not going to do that. I'm leaving the same the sign standard there, but we're going to comply with all current current okay. regulations. We are not going to do that. We'll have an exterior lit sign. It'll be, you know, and it'll only be by your approval. Okay. I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval. Second. Motion a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you for your consideration. Good night, guys. Good, Good, night, night. Good to see y'all. And that brings up uh, Paul and I assume Randy. Yes, that is correct. So if you could, Bill, put the site plan on the screen, the new one, the revised one, please. Okay, let me just double check what I have here. Okay. I sent it to you yesterday, I believe. Yep. Okay. So we're back at 10 to 12 Russell Street. And we talked about this two weeks ago. And the issue was that the board felt there were too many vehicles allowed on the site. There was 20 numbered sites on the previous plan, plus two uh, spaces labeled customer parking. So there was really 22 spaces on the site. The board said that 15 was the max that would be allowed. So I have moved some things around. There were, uh, if you're looking at the building to the right of the building, there are 12, 13, 14, 15. There were two spaces between those and basically right up against route nine. I've taken those out. The sites labeled, spaces labeled 10 and 11 were what was previously called customer parking and so that takes up two spaces. And then I took five out of the row, the double row of that was 14 spaces. And now there's nine there. So there is a total of 15 spaces. I did it in a way that I thought would be most beneficial for Paul in terms of ability to work around the site, keep things away from Route 9 as best as possible. Um, and so I just accept any comments from the board. If anybody sees they'd like it to be different, please let me know. Okay, a couple general comments. Um, this looks good. This is an entrance to the town. So we really want to make sure that uh, Paul keeps it looking nice. Yeah. And and complied with the parking. Um, regarding the North Hadley site, the first couple of days were a little rough once he, once he got his cars adjusted, but I've gone by there several times um, over the last week, week and a half. And in general, things are in pretty much in compliance with the original site plan approval, and it looks nice. So, it does. I agree. I agree. And if Paul's there. You. If your son, Paulie, has any questions about the significance of the site plan, please have him call us. We, you know, we don't uh, just do this because we're out for yo yo yokels. <laughs> <laughs> so, th so, thank you very much, Paul, for complying yeah. with both requests, with this one and the one in North Hadley. And I'll make an editorial comment that I'll put it in plain English. You're getting screwed on your East Street site <laughs> by the state. But there's nothing we can, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about it. No, but it's a great it Hadley business. The same. Well, well, it's sir, a, uh, so, uh, good evening. Well, you know, I appreciate all, all you guys' help and uh, all that you guys do for me and all the support from the planning board and the select board. It is really appreciated very much. 
And I thank you very much for that. And I will make sure that I comply with everything that you guys uh, say and respectfully do that. Well, so, you know, you're, you're a local businessman. You've got kids in the school system. Hopefully your son's going to be a standout basketball player in the not too distant future. So well, hopefully it's yes. working out. So yeah. To, uh, to Jimmy's comment about keeping it looking nice, Paul has decided the garage doors are not up to his standards. He's going to replace those. There's a couple of windows that he doesn't like that he's going to replace. Nothing ex is changing to the building itself, just basically replaced what's there with something newer. And I believe he said he wants to the color scheme to be similar to what is on the existing building at the corner of East Street and Route 9. That's fine. Are we, Jim, are we going to have a site plan review or is, are we going through a site plan review now? We're waiving it. We're because waiving it. Uh, so we, we, we're we not going to see the, the, the color of the building nor the building itself. Well, they're asking for a waiver. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, We're asking for a waiver. It is up to us de to decide if we want to give it to them because Mr. Ober went through site plan approval for the property. Well, well Jim, just I have one little correction regarding the North Hadley site. They, yes, there were 26 cars, and a couple of days later, there was 16. Those 10 cars were moved down the street to the house there. So there were 10 cars parked there. They were but they are no longer parked at his house. Yeah, that was just temporary. That was very They, they were parked at his house for, I want to say, two or three days. But over the last, I want to say, maybe 10 no, days. We had customers who were picking up the cars. The house, the, the, the cars at the house are no longer there, and the garage has reasonably the number of cars it's supposed to have. Okay. Unless somebody can disagrees with that. So I have a question. So we're down to 15 cars. Is that is that divvied up among vehicles for sale, vehicles awaiting repair, and staff? Correct. So that's it. Customer parking, uh, employee parking. And cars for sale and cars being worked on, yes. All it's, just like, it's the same situation as you have in North Hadley, where the, the maximum amount of cars on the site for this one will be 15. Whatever they're there for, it's 15 maximum. 15 outside the building. You can stuff the building. Correct. In. Yes. Okay. So, Randy, uh, will you have to go before the select board for a class two license? And will you be going for this number of automobiles? He will have to go to, yeah. to get a class two license for there. And I don't know how many automobiles he will attempt to go for. Uh, that I, we haven't talked about that yet. Well, um, is the there a concern? I, I, the reason I bring this up is that there was a, uh, there was a problem in the sequencing of the last uh, permit. In other words, the select board granted a certain number of automobiles for that site and the planning board had not even had the site plan review yet. So we were caught between a rock and a hard place. So uh, I, I wish that it wouldn't happen again. In other words, asking for more uh, automobiles on their class two license in front of the board of selectmen than we indicated at a meeting here or at a site plan meeting. You know, that's I understand what you're saying, Joe, and I think that that situation that you're referring to uh, taught us all a lesson. And mm -hmm. there's there's nobody I will represent that will go to the, before the select board before they go to the planning board for a class two license. Right. So I think that this is with, not this is not a confrontation with you, Randy, because I, I understand. You know, I, it was more of an informational especially to the new meeting members. And also to, I would add that if this were a class one license, it would not be allowed in the area because the class one automobile license is prohibited. You cannot have two within 2.5 miles of each other. Right. So, and this is a class two. So just to, to uh, talk about what Joe's is concern is if he went to the select board and said, I want, a used car license for 15 cars, 
then that's all he would be able to do on the site is put 15 used cars. He wouldn't have room to repair anything. So he, his maximum would be 15. Right now there's a 20 car uh, limit on that site. So I don't think he's going to go for 15 cars, but is there, is there an issue with the board if he were to do that? And I'm not suggesting he's going to. I just want to make sure I understand everything before we move forward here. I think there would be from my point of view, because we'll be in the same dilemma we were before. In other words, the select board is overruling the site plan. And what do they know about the site plan? Well, if the site plan, which is what you're looking at, says 15 cars total, then they would not be overruling if he asked for 15 cars for sale. The, the issue here is not so much how many, whether he has one, two, or 15 class two vehicles for sale. It's a matter of he's allowed 15 cars on site outside the building, period. Period, yeah, good point. Jim. Whether they be be customers or for sale or no. for that matter employees that's the maximum number of common combined vehicles he can have in any way shape or form any way he decides he wants to put those 15 vehicles okay so. that's what i that's what i understood i just wanted to make sure that that's what everybody else was thinking now, is the board in favor of granting a waiver of site plan approval here or do they want to see a formal hearing i i don't think we need a formal hearing <clears throat> but i would like to see a little more detail uh such as what the color will be oh, the building itself you mean what the new garage doors are going to look like okay the, uh sir the doors are going to be the the ones that are on the old building because i'll be taking those doors and putting them on that other building uh, because they are insulated and as far as the color, it'll, it'll be the same. Whatever is on East Street, it'll be white, and we'll have a little blue, blue stripe on the top, just like exactly the same uh, paint on uh, right. on East Street. So take a picture of that. Yes. And and we'll make it part of the file. So just just yeah. so we know. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, exactly the same picture, uh, because Mass DOT said they're going to be uh, demolishing the building and they said you can take out uh, whatever is good stuff from the building and you can take it wherever you're moving. So I will take those doors because do those doors are insulated and they're good. Okay. And you're satisfied that you have adequate uh, clearance to operate a lift or whatever you need to operate inside? Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Everything is the way we want it. I mean, there are going to be no surprises where I have to pull the roof up and all that. Absolutely not. Uh, it's all set. We are all we're going to do is my basically my goal is going to be just to it is an entry point to the town. I'll be sitting there, just make it look nice for everybody. So whoever comes down to, in town of Hadley, they look at me first. <laughs> hey, the guy looks good, nice colors, nice grass. He's looking good there. That's it. That's my goal. Um, have we talked about signage or um, shielding on the lights? I see that there are 12 foot light poles. Yes, sir. Uh, sir Mark, the lights that are in the parking lot, they will they will stay the, the way they are. As far as the sign, my sign from old building is going to go into the, the new building. Only thing would be a little change, I think, because uh, we're going to be selling cars. So it will be Probably, I'll try to get the name, same name, just add sales behind or just a little bit of change. But the sign will move from uh, the old building to the new building because I'm just trying to, you know, save money wherever I can because it's very tight. What's your, yeah, what's your time frame here, Paul? So if everything goes uh, through uh, once blessings from you guys, then uh, we probably will try to close by uh, end of July. And then I, I let the mass DOT know that, okay, the deal is closed and I need about a month, month and a half to move my stuff from East Street down to uh, 12 Russell Street. So realistic way, I would say uh, end of August, I should probably, God willing, clear the old building and go into the new building. So if you could bring us a, or find a way to scan it, email it, uh, pictures of the existing garage doors which you are going to reuse. Yes, sir. 
pictures of the existing signs, which you're going to try to reuse as much as yes, possible. Sir. Yes, sir. And uh, maybe a um, a paint uh, a paint sample, paint chip uh, of what you're going to, what color you're going to be using. Yeah, the same. It's going to be white and just exact same. I'll send the picture and and okay. as, you know, I, I'm even taking the windows out of, out of two from the building. Uh, so those, these windows are going to go on to that building. Okay, so if you want to do a picture of the new building, the 10 to 12, and you're mm -hmm. going to be doing it, yeah, just put, get a picture of that too. So just, we, we want to okay. be sure when we're talking about, same as it is now, that we yes, have a baseline of what it is now. Exactly, yeah, exact same. Uh, there are going to be no, luckily the, the size of the building is almost the same like the old building, so... Uh, and the windows I put in this building, they're not that old and they're still very in good shape. So I can use those windows too. All right, so Bill, we'll make sure we get pictures to, do you want me to send them to you anytime or do you want to wait till the next meeting? And well, anytime. Uh, All right, I'll yeah, get, them from, you get them and then. Uh, All right, I'll get them from Paul and I'll send them to you. So um, uh, should we, uh, I mean, is it uh, is the blessings all good? That can I move forward with the deal, or should I wait for um, for you guys to give me the uh, approval? Uh, I, again, I I don't I think this is appropriate for a waiver of further site plan approval. Uh, I just want more detail, which you'll okay. be able to get us in two weeks. Yeah, I, I think you can move forward, Paul. I don't think there's going to be any holdup here, but that's my personal opinion. Mark, you got any comments mm -hmm. there? Based on what Paul said, that you know, the only changes he's making are very minimal, and he's going to document them with photographs. I, I think, I think it's good. Well, I don't think we're not going to get your approval tonight, but we're also saying that we don't see any reason why we won't give you approval if we get that information for our next meeting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, we're all good on this for tonight? Yep. All right, great. That's all I have this evening, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good night, guys. Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank so, you. Uh, Michael Stowes was up next. He may have been there for Ideal Movers, Bill. He's oh, okay. uh, working. Okay. He's one of the work, uh, uh, contractors on that project. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Janet and Shelley Trahey. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Are they muted? They're both muted. Janet both or Shelly? Hello, this is Gerald. How you doing? Hey. Oh, no, we're just here uh, listening. We're the, uh, the we're the river people. Okay. Okay. So we're just uh, we're just monitoring everything today. Okay. And uh, all right, fine. Well, if you're, if you're a Hadley resident, you come to the uh, the uh, town meeting Saturday. Oh yeah, we plan to. You can come anyway, but you can vote. I should say. Yeah, right. <laughs> now we're we're planning on on showing up. So, I believe that is everyone then uh, for information. And Mr. Then we will be up in a minute. Uh, we did get a request from Kevin Michelson for a request for continuance of his special permit on Grand Oak Farm to June 22nd. I'll entertain a motion to grant the continuance. I'll make a motion to accept the request for a continuance. We're doing, are we doing the 15th and the 22nd? We're meeting on the 15th. His request is for the 22nd. Okay. So excuse me, it's John Rogers representing Grand Oak Farm this, this afternoon. So I just want to be clear. So the continuance will be now June 22nd? Well, let me, let me be clear. It's a formality. He requested June 22nd, but on June 15th, which is our, we don't meet on a 22nd. 
So the 15th is when we would be is when we would be taking up this issue unless he requests another continuance. Okay. Okay. So it'll be on the 15th instead. That is correct. Friends, thank you so much for monitoring this situation for Grand Oak. We are very appreciative. And we also thank you for forwarding any documentation of re relevance uh, to us uh, through my email, if, if you wish, uh, JJ, excuse me, for Grand Oak Tree, um, that we may disseminate to our neighbors. So we thank you ever so much for all your help. You're welcome. We haven't had any new information in the last several months just a just request for continued continuances so thank, thank you so much okay you're welcome you have have a motion motion second 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 any other discussion all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed motion <laughs> passes unanimously okay right. mr comia hi board Good evening. Good evening. Um, so where did we left, leave off? I think we left off at um, the MS4 regulations, which the board received this afternoon. Um, yep, Patty thank Gambarini. you very much. Yes, Patty Gambarini um, submitted those um, to Jim and I, and I made sure to forward that um, to the board for their review. Um, I don't know how much Jim has shared with you with regards to his his participation with this MS4 um, working group. Um, it has been happening for I feel like the last one and a half years um, to finalize those regulations, which need to be approved um, at least on paper by June thirtieth. Um, as I mentioned in the email, it would require a public hearing. Right. Um, and it sounds like June 15th is a very busy day already. Um, but I do think that um, in speaking with Patty, the first set of reportings um, are not till September. So if, if you go to July, I think you'll be fine. Um, but the, those regulations supplement the, um, the town zone, the town bylaw that, that, that you all adopted in 2019. So this is now to complete that package to be com in compliance with the MS4 um, permitting requirement. Um, and um, with that, I think that, um, you know, it, 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 it addresses according to um, Patty's work over the past two years on this, um, all that it needs to with regards to the MS4. And, um, you know, obviously it also involves DPW, the planning board and the conservation commission when it's appropriate with regards to stormwater permits that need to be issued um, and, and how that usually works. Um, so that's before the board. Um, I, I mean, I can try to entertain questions now um, or at least take note for Patty to address. Um, but I, you know, knowing that you received it today and, and it's a lot of, you know, verbiage and, and regulations that may have existed um, in your previous zoning, but has been updated to reflect the new permit. Um, you know, that it's, it's, it's um, it reflects the work of the working group and their satisfaction with, uh, with the product. Just as a quick comment on that, it take it took a huge amount of time to put this together. And if you haven't looked at those regulations, they're in excess of 30 pages. And it's it is what it is. Um, a lot of it pertains to the building inspector is the overseer or has control over the, everything in it. In other words, it's he is kind of funneled through the building inspector for final approval, but the planning board has a piece of it. The conservation has a sizable piece of it. Um, and in some cases, even the DPW and the board of health. But um, it's, it's, it's involved, it's technical, it's complicated. I'm not gonna make light of any of that. Um, but so, it complies. So it complies with the state and that's what makes it such a 
big document. So would this apply to the presentation we had from Ideal earlier today? And are they getting in before the deadline? It is. It will apply to Ideal because the, doc, the zoning bylaw was adopted almost two years ago. These are the regulations. The good, the, the, I don't want to say the good news, but a lot of it, everybody already complies with. Okay. There's very little things in there that I don't think any of the projects we've seen don't comply with. What it really kind of addresses that maybe we're not doing today is longer term or long term is that it's going to be inspected at some periodic frequency by the DPW to ensure that, okay, they built it yesterday, for example. Well, two years from now or five years from now, does it still work? Has it been maintained properly? Those are things that kind of we're not probably doing a very good job of right now. This bylaw and document address that. Um, that's probably the biggest change of anything is to make sure that, yeah, it was installed properly. It was built properly. They're taking care of it today. Well, like I said, down the road, are they still taking care of it? Okay. Thank you. So, Ken, I didn't get a chance to really look through it, but um, we did talk about also making some changes to our subdivision regulations. Is any of that worked into this? What, um, it again, Bill? We were talking about making changes to our subdivision regulations to conform to the MS4. The the subdivision, no, we have not, in nothing in the document directly referred to subdivisions, I don't think. Does it, Ken? No, um, that will probably be a, a task that I can do um, with regards to how how it's addressed within the subdivision regs and I'll ensure to do that. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, 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 this is specifically to supplement and complement your town general bylaw. Um, so now that you have a set of regulations that will help you administer the bylaw, yeah. um, but the subdivision regs need to be updated. And I think we can have a conversation about um, if there are other items within the subdivision regulations that you'd like updated um, to maybe do a, you know, some sort of um, not wholesale change, but um, to address, you know, items that you may have encountered in your administration of it. I don't in think... addition to stormwater. Yeah. That, that's a good point that the general, the, the zoning bylaw has kind of been replaced by the general bylaw and the general bylaw um, directs responsibility. That's why there's so many people involved in the regulation is because the general, general bylaw directs responsibilities across several boards. So like I said, it is a bit complicated, complex. So Ken, regarding the subdivision regulations, we did go through a major rewrite of those with Larry. I do recall that. I think you, you are in a place where it reflects the best practices, but I, I, you know, I don't think that in my time with Hadley, there's been any subdivision development, um, or I think it was the one. same. Housing. There's only one subdivision, was only one. which okay. started about three years ago, that is subject to the new regulations. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you're not you're not finding any complications with administering the, that regu set of regulations. Yeah. Not not directly. There is an issue that will have to flesh out a little later there there's some confusion among the between the planning board and the dpw about the the standards and the current director of the dpw has expressed uh, a feeling that the the as-built plan that he got for a street that is has been on the warrant five times a I think to be accepted, maybe four times, uh, that he's getting inadequate documentation, but we're not exactly clear whether that is a personal, a personal standard or a, uh, he, he's referred to uh, state requirements, but we haven't been able to identify what, um, what's what. So 
we're going to have to have a longer conversation with that. And it's a street that was approved, uh, a subdivision that uh, was approved under the prior version of the subdivision regulations. But, but, but the road hasn't been accepted yet. The road hasn't been accepted, but it is ripe for acceptance. Everything has been built out. So um, that, that may be the new, the new sticking point. Uh, we've basically provided the director with the same level of detail that we provided to the previous directors who expressed no problems. So, um, you know, New, new sheriff in town. I got I have to figure out what the uh, what the issues are, and it, obviously it doesn't come up very often. This this is the only one that is actively pending acceptance, and we have a couple of other others that will be coming forward, and we have a couple of problem children that have some some issues. Okay, I mean, I think with regards to the subdivision regulations um, and I don't think because I entered PVPC as um, Larry was completing his work as a consultant on the model subdivision regulations. And um, those reflected work of six communities um, in, the, in the region um, that addressed stormwater to the extent of understanding that maybe the roadways that are in current or in subdivision regulations currently elsewhere, and maybe maybe this is not the case in Hadley, um, that they're too wide. Um, so I know that model regulations are, are suggesting narrower roadways, and this has the buy-in from public safety and DPW. Um, so I don't know if that's what the DPW director may be implying by suggesting that you know, there, there needs to be another look at that particular subdivision, but um, I think we can, we can definitely have a conversation about um, that as well as just okay. to ensure that there are, you know, that stormwater is handled appropriately where it needs to be. So I don't mind piggybacking a public hearing on adopting regulations onto the, uh, the, the, uh, June 15th meeting, especially if we could save a few bucks by. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I agree with that. With a single legal notice. Right. I, I, that, that was my intent was to put them put them on the same date so that we can save a, a little bit on the notice. Yeah, even if, if, if it is a heavy night with other issues, we can always open the public hearing and continue it. That's correct. And that will get us over the hump. Yeah, I sincerely doubt Mr. Michelson is going to be ready to, for that date, and I doubt very much how the garage will be ready for that date. Simply, what's going on between those two projects, I think they're both going to request another continuance. So we're going to be down to uh, the adult use marijuana and the regulations that night. So... But I will um, take a look at where the subdivision regulations lie with regards. I know Patty, I think Patty had done some work initially in identifying in the Hadley regs things that needed to be um, maybe addressed. So yeah. I'll dust them off and, and try to find them. Um, and then we can. Yeah, she mentioned a few times that a meeting about the subdivision regs may have to be altered to accept certain things. I remember that, Ken, you're right. Okay. And we definitely provided uh, copies of the subdivision regulations right at the outset of all of this. Okay. Um, so I know that you have your town meeting. No, you already had your town meeting. No, nope. Saturday. Saturday. Okay. Um, oh, you had your public hearing for the um, your warrant articles. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess you know, if if the board, other than the subdivision regulations, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't necessarily have a, a work plan 
understanding that we were trying to get over the hump of town meeting and get through the MS4 permitting. Um, so, you know, I know that in the past we had identified planning board rules and regulations as something <laughs> that we should be looking at. Um, those are general. Um, and then, um, yeah, no, that was what I had. And then, and then obviously we had the conversation a couple of weeks ago about um, implementing the master plan um, and maybe some ideas of where the planning board is leading um, the leading authority in, in looking at some of those tasks for land use. Um, but I, yeah, I, I guess, you know, if the board has any comments or questions with regards to the, the next tasks. I think the next task may be, because it might be the easiest one to simply what part of the subdivision regs need to be amended for the MS4. Okay. Um, just to keep everything on the same page, if you would, with the MS4 stuff, get that out of the way. Yeah, what, one question, uh, Ken, is that it's cropped up in Sunderland and it cropped up in Hadley is, uh, if somebody puts a subdivision in or in uh, just appeared before us a, a commercial building lot, house uh, industrial in industrial industrial zone, uh, how big a s septic system is allowed? In other words, a private in Sunland, the uh, the affordable housing going in is using a private system. Uh, like a sewage treatment plant that the town is conventionally have to accept it. Mm -hmm. you, you, I, understand, you understand I, my question? I no, I I don't necessarily know. You know, well, that's that's a board of health question, probably. Well, I think there's, they're they're caught. Sunderland's caught in a rock and a hard spot here. They are the board, correct. The board of health in Hadley does not accept a public septic system. They Correct. don't allow it. Even if the town of Sunderland had the same regulation, the affordable Chapter 40B may, may override that rule of the Board of Health. Because Hadley's in compliance with 40B, the Hadley Board of Health rule would probably stand. Um, but again, I'm I'm guessing on those that those two comments. So as long as we stay in compliance, we should be okay. We just got to make sure that we keep our head above that limit. You're, you're right, Jim. I think, you know, one of the things that, and I'm assuming Su Sunderland has a subsidized housing inventory under 10%, whereas yes, Hadley has it a it's being built now. It was right. literally it was one percent. Oh, okay. But they had they had dozens of apartment units that didn't qualify, so they were in between a rock and a hard pile. Yeah. So I mean, I think that um, it definitely is a um, a benefit to obviously have a subsidized housing inventory over ten percent because if a forty B project were to come to Hadley then you would have your ammunition to say, we're over 10%. Um, and if you want to develop this housing, you'll have to go through the regular permitting processes. Um, whereas, you know, if, if, if you were under 40B, then there would be a threat of having the ZBA um, run a comprehensive permit application and, and go through that process, which would bypass certain regulations. Um, but, so and until that happens, I you know I think that we just try to understand the affordable housing in Hadley and ensure that you know it, it's maintained above ten percent. So the threat of forty B doesn't come knocking. Okay. Um. So we're going to do the regulations on 615. Ken, I would say that's probably the next, next meeting you could attend if you want. Yeah, I'll be there. I, what, I'll, what I'll also do, I know that um, you guys like to have your bills before June 30th. So oh, yes. that's when I'll have the bill. Okay, that would be great. Um, 
I guess another question is whether or not you want to have the conversation about doing another um, service agreement. Sorry. Another contract next year, absolutely. Okay. Um, I don't think that the finance committee is giving us any more money for that. So probably be the same $7,500. Okay. Very good. And that would be nice to get that signed again for the second, only the second time in my career here at the planning board before the end of June. <laughs> we'll work on it. It's a very busy time for the commission, um, yeah. but I will, luckily those things are regular, relatively, you know, simple to put together. Okay. Yeah, the um, town meeting in uh, this Saturday will give us the budget for next year. So we can't vote on something we could vote on, actually on our June 1st meeting, we probably can vote on uh, the contract or at least the, allowing the money for it. Okay. But uh, we can't, right now we can't vote on something we don't have. That makes sense. Um, so I guess just an FYI, I know this conversation may have come up in town. Um, it's regarding this new housing choice legislation. Um, maybe Mark or Bill as commissioners to PVPC um, have sat through a presentation or a, at least a question and answer session with um, Catherine Ratte of the Land Use Department at PVPC. Um, I'm putting, I'm speaking, or I may be speaking at the June 10th um, PVPC commission meeting on the housing choice legislation. I think we may have someone from the state. Um, this is gonna be something that with regards to housing, you know, if Hadley is putting forth bylaws or approving special permits, ADUs, um, things like that, um, the threshold of approvals, if you don't already know, go down to um, simple majority. Right. Um, so there's just a little more information. I know the regulations are kind of still rolling out and it's still kind of new and I'm still kind of learning too, but um, there's going to be a presentation that I'll be um, at least leading or introducing on. You know, the only thing that I could see that that might affect would be our affordable housing amendment to the bylaw. You think that might affect that bill? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, it, there's, there are classes of um, development that are favored. Okay. So, um, Allowing uh, duplexes by right near our T station would um, trigger going to a simple majority. Okay, but uh, I don't think change. I don't think adding the payment in lieu option to the inclusionary zoning triggers that. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, the 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 lift obviously is getting the two thirds um, that you'll need for that approval at town meeting. Um, but no, I think Bill has at least summarized it to a, to an extent where it's regarding housing production. Um, mm -hmm. So if if the town is if the planning board is exploring ways to provide um, as of right multifamily or two family um, where you increase density in areas, that is something that would require a simple majority rather than a um, two thirds. Super. You know, Ken, this all sounds well and good, and it's a very, very noble effort. However, it boils down to not in my backyard. Sure. And that's, uh, you know, when people are voting on it, I think they have to picture that scene as we found in the 55 and all the housing. So yeah. it's, uh, it's kind of an unusual situation, but I, you know about it. Yeah. I'm going to kill my friend. So at one think point, I was thinking that it would be make things a lot easier if we allowed uh, accessory apartments by right, uh, except that we have one lingering accessory apartment that um, shows why we need to do it by special permit, I guess. Yeah, good point. At least for now. Yeah, I think, you know, reviewing that, that is probably something that would make just permitting easier is the ADUs and how, how, how the town has defined it. 
and how it administers the bylaw in, in trying to um, either support. Um, and could you just uh, explain what the ADUs are? I know Greenfield just passed one of those. Uh, so it's accessory dwelling units and basically, and you know, I know I saw it on your agenda that you had uh, uh, a hearing um, for that, but it is depending on how it's written in your bylaw, um, the ability to create another housing unit on that parcel. So either as an attached product or detached product, depending again on the town um, and of a certain size. So I know the state has created universal language for ADUs, which would, if the town wanted to adopt it would probably make it easier um, with 900 square feet, I think is the maximum size of an ADU. Um, but, you know, whether or not the board would accept approving them via special permit or site plan review or at an administrative approval by the building department, that is, you know, something that a lot of towns are having the conversation about. Um, we, we allow up to 900 square feet attached to the existing structure. Um, do you have a, permit. do you have a family requirement? No. Okay. We Ken, allow top, off the top of your head, can you give me the top five communities in Massachusetts that this housing choice thing might affect the most? It's all Eastern Mass. Yeah. I mean, because it's the, the new housing choice legislation is specific also as Bill had uh, addressed to MBTA communities of which none, none of the communities in Western Mass are MBTA communities. Yeah. Less is Worcester. Um, which would require a, additional density around those stations. Um, but it, I think it really does affect Eastern Mass and a lot of the housing needs that they have out there. I, I know that depending on what community you're looking at in Pioneer Valley, there's probably more, more communities had, that have the appetite to um, you know, uh, amend their zoning to address and alleviate some of the permitting requirements for ADUs um, and or additional lots on, or additional buildings and parcels. And um, we, we must not forget where UMass is partly in Hadley. Sure, yeah. The, the student stuffers around, people are literally buying lots for 150,000 and converting them to student housing. So the pressure is on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the, the town may need to, you know, address that at some point via regulation. Well, you, if you address the need of affordable housing, we have this, this background of uh, students. Yeah. So University of Massachusetts has abdicated the responsibility for housing their students. Simply put. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Mark. No, well, no. you know, many urban universities don't have a plan for housing students. I mean, <laughs> many. That's the argument UMass gives all the time. Well, we're as we're as good as housing our students as the University of Iowa is, or it doesn't matter. I think they're advertising right now for uh, what they call a P3, a public-private partnership to build, I've forgotten how many thousand um, beds, so. Yeah, they, they came to Hadley a couple of years ago, Mark. They wanted to build uh, kind of in the wetlands near 116. Uh, University of Kentucky was an example they gave. But okay, I, I digress, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, do we have anything else for Ken? Thanks, Ken. Okay, yeah, thank you, Ken. Thanks. Of course. So, um, Mark, we're going to vote you as chair. Oh, we need to reorganize. Oh, do we? Move the same, I, I move, request that we remove, move the same slate as presently in charge of the planning board. It's working well. Did you second that, Mark? <laughs> I would second that. Okay, so that's going to be myself as chairman, 
Bill is clerk. Mark on Pioneer Valley Planning Commission representative. No, that's he's the Mark alternate. The alternate. Uh, yeah. Mark is CPA. Oh, Mark is CPA. I'm sorry. Bill is Pioneer Valley I, Planning Commission. I am PVTA. Uh, Mark's the alternate. The alternate's appointed by the select board. Okay. And Mike is the devil's advocate. Okay. I'm the guy that asked, I'm the, guy that asked the tough questions. <laughs> okay. He, he, didn't know how much, he, didn't, he didn't know how much it cost per kilowatt hour, but he, didn't, he knew it wasn't 25 cents. That's at least that's a start. <laughs> Any other assignments, Bill? That's that shows three. That's all that's uh, left at this point. Uh, okay. You know, if it uh, matters, uh, let's see, I, I'm sort of the informal representative to that housing and economic development committee so which has been mostly housing and very little economic development um you want to point somebody else to that no nah, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with it okay keep an eye on what's going on um and uh I don't know, it's also not really official. I, I've been going, there's this development team that meets once a week. Oh, uh, the building inspector? Building inspector and fire and police and conservation just to talk over what projects are in, on, in the pipeline and what's going on. Uh, so I'm happy to stay with that too. Okay. A lot of hats. Well, they meet at noon. They typically meet in the morning on a Wednesday, so or Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday at one thirty. Tuesday at one thirty. So it's kind of a tough time for anybody else to go. It's uh, it, it's on Zoom, and uh, I was uh, I was going to it because I was having lunch with Linda at town hall. Oh. Uh, but now I uh, yeah, I, I have an understanding boss. Okay. It lets me get away with a lot. Okay, we have a motion and a second. And the appointments, any, any, any other comments on that? I would second that motion if you've already voiced it. I think we're all keeping the roles we had in the COVID era, correct? Right. Yes. Let me uh, just go to one thing. Let me just uh, pull up my list of the last letter I sent. Let's see if there's anything we've forgotten. Uh, Tommy, do you feel properly supported by your local planning board? Oh, it's great. He's been the biggest help. I actually, if I have a chance, I have one question for everybody. I forgot one of my questions today that for uh, Mr. Dwyer's help. Okay. Anyways, okay. we have a motion, a second. Uh, yeah, hang on. The appointments, Bill. Hang on, just a second. I'm bringing up the. Uh, okay. The the. Uh, uh, no, I'll, uh, um, we just did uh, chair, clerk, PVPC, CPA. And recommended the select board appoint Mark as uh, PVPC alternate. Okay. So the others are sort of informal. All right. You have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. You want to notify the select select board, uh, Mr. Dwyer? Do you want me to do it? I will. I have a letter, so I'll. Uh, okay. I do a letter to the clerk with a copy to the. Uh, Select board. Okay. You're up, Tom. Quick question. So I had a call yesterday, I believe it was from Applebee's corporate, that when they did their last remodel, they did not do an internally lit sign because it was not allowed. And they're claiming, and I have not been out to see, but they're claiming that Chili's and Texas Roadhouse both have that. And I just don't know what the, you know, if you guys know the whole situation with all that. Chili's might have internally illuminated because I think they were in before the bylaw was changed. Texas Roadhouse has Halo. Right. Yeah. I, I, I knew we would get in trouble with that Halo light. Uh, 
it's uh, it's one of those things that we probably should not allow it because you know people think it's internally illuminated. Well, well, I'm going to call them back because they're they're claiming that Chili's was redone recently, and if it was, it didn't get your approval then. And I have not seen it at night. Well, so it's it's grandfather, sure. so they we can't do much about it. Thank you. That's it. That's it. I don't have anything else. I have nothing else, Mister. Yes, Mike. No. I, I thought you raised your hand. No. I was just going to make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> yeah. Just a minute. Make, make sure we don't have to know no other comment. That's all. Okay. No, nothing has any, anybody has anything else. You're up, Mike. Oh, no, for motion to adjourn. For town. Oh, sorry, Bill. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, for town meeting, I'm assuming, Jim, you'll sort of take the lead on the articles and I'll back you up. Yes. <sighs> I'll second that in motion. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, we have a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Media's history, thank you, and thank you, John. Good night, everybody. Good night, folks. Good night.